Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Forrest with Rocky Mountain School of Photography and today we're gonna to talk about advanced photo and video storage techniques. So here's the deal. A lot of you guys probably store your images on an internal hard drive or maybe an external hard drive, whatever it happens to be, but you're to the point where maybe your internal is full, your external's full, maybe you're starting to shoot video and you're looking at the sizes of external hard drives out there and realizing that it's pretty expensive to get bigger drives. And in fact, getting anything above a five terabyte or a six terabyte external drive at this point that's still portable is very difficult. So we are gonna look at the options that are out there to make your life easier with advanced photo storage. Very important disclaimer, this is not a beginner level video. In order to watch this and really get something out of it, I recommend sitting down, I recommend being an intermediate to advanced level shooter who has been shooting for a while, has a good handle on workflow and organization, and is simply tired of buying new external hard drives all the time and running out of space constantly. So if you're a beginner, click away. I have many organization videos that have to do a simple, basic organization for those of you who are just getting started. But if you're an advanced level shooter or you're someone who shoots a high volume of images, I highly recommend grabbing some popcorn, sitting back and watching this video. So let's talk about it. All right, so the first thing that I wanna look at and address today is why do we need advanced storage techniques? Why is this video even exist? Why aren't hard drives, external hard drives, or even internal hard drives for that matter, enough? And that really comes down to a few main factors, and I wanna look at each of those. So let's take a look at those main factors. Here are the main things that I consider. The first is speed. External hard drives, while being great, and I'm talking traditional HDD or hard disk drives, your standard like Western Digital My Passport or little Seagate portable drives, they're slow. In the grand scheme of things, they're way slower than an internal hard drive, and they're pretty much a little bit slower than an external SSD. And that can be a problem for some people. We'll dive a little bit more into that in a second. The other thing is capacity. If you limit yourself to the portable form factor of an external hard drive, you are usually limited, and this is being recorded beginning of 2020, so don't date me if you're watching this in 20 years or 10 years or five years, however long it happens to be. The limit right now is about five or six terabytes for a portable hard drive, for a portable HDD or hard disk drive. So that's limiting for a lot of people. Um, I do a lot of work with Amy Vitali. I've set up her, uh, her whole image storage system System. She's a, a Nat Geo photographer. She shoots like 50 terabytes of images a year and video. That's a ton of footage and video and things to shoot. And so for her, this is simply like she filled two of these up in one trip. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for her. So capacity, portability, obviously a huge thing to consider. Um, if this isn't the answer, is there another answer that is still fast and still high capacity? And we'll look at that in a little bit, but portability is a big thing as well. Another thing is redundancy. Um, obviously, these little external hard drives are prone to crash. Now, SSDs are less likely to crash, and there's some variations in there. Obviously, buying good, high-quality drives is recommended, but redundancy is very important. And what I mean by that is if you buy one six terabyte portable hard drive, I would strongly recommend you buy two more and you back up your first to your second and your first to your third so that that main drive is backed up two additional locations. If you store your images on an internal hard drive, having a second backup of the internal as well as a first backup of the internal, I highly recommend. So there's redundancy as well. Some systems will actually automatically redundant Redundantize, redundantize, that's a word. Redundantize your photos, which is pretty cool. Also, I may use photos just because I'm mostly a photographer. Uh, anything I say with photos, this totally applies to video even more because video shooters usually shoot more footage and the need for this is uh, kind of enhanced for sure. So redundancy is important. Um, also remote or multi-user access. Again, getting to that point of this is not a beginner video. Um, many people who have been shooting for a while have an assistant who does a good bit of their editing or a good bit of their keywording or organizational work. And if that's you, uh, mailing a hard drive back and forth may not be the smartest choice. There's actually a lot of ways to store things in an advanced way that gives remote users access to your entire image library, obviously in a very controlled way. It's not like it's like, hey, come steal my photos. It's, it's got to have a username and a password, obviously, but there's ways to do that. So that is super awesome. Um, additionally, ease of expansion, and this honestly could be one of the most important when you fill up a five terabyte hard drive, the ease of expansion is going to Best Buy buying a 10 terabyte hard drive and copying your five terabytes of stuff over to your 10 terabyte, 
it's a lot of work. Um, some of the systems that we're going to talk about in a little bit allow you to just pop in an additional hard drive into a big black box and all of a sudden your storage pool goes up from you know, 25 terabytes to 50 terabytes or 25 terabytes to 30 terabytes very, very quickly and very easily. So that's really cool as well. Um, so let, let's take each of those in turn and let's talk a little bit more about them to give you guys a little bit of a foundation for why this is important. So let's talk speed first. Um, you guys, whenever you look at the speed of a system, whenever you look at the speed of a, um, a really any system, there's always going to be one thing that we refer to as the bottleneck of that system, the thing that slows it down the most, the thing that is the, uh, you could have, you know, a super big, think of a think of like plumbing, you could have a super big drain pipe coming out of your house. But if that drain pipe goes through a little drain pipe and then back out to a big drain pipe, it doesn't matter how big the big drain pipe is. If there's a little one in the middle of that run, that's gonna bottleneck things. And so that's a pretty important thing to understand. I remember, uh, I remember a few years ago, um, there were, and apologies for these references, I really want you guys to actually understand this. This is gonna be a, a long form YouTube video just because I think uh, it, it requires like the actual teaching that I would give. I really want like, those of you who are into this, I want you to really understand it. Um, there was a time back in the day where uh, hard drives were touted as being plug-inable. In fact, it still happens with Thunderbolt 3, right? And you had like, oh, it's Thunderbolt 3 enabled and that's awesome. Thunderbolt 3 is capable of 40 gigabits per second. Holy crap. Well, here's the deal. If you actually look at that, yes, Thunderbolt 3 is capable of transfer speeds of 40 gigabits per second, but the hard drive, the actual spinning plates inside of your drive are usually only capable of maybe 800 megabits per second. So you've got your 40 gigabit hose and it's all being bottlenecked by a hard drive where the platters can only spin at maybe 800 megabits. So it's important to identify and understand the bottlenecks that we're going to face as photographers and videographers. And don't buy something more expensive if there's something else that's actually bottlenecking your system. So let's look a little bit more about that. Your transfer speed basically is only as slow or as fast as the slowest thing in the system. Very important to understand. So how fast are things? Well, let's, let's take a look here. I've actually built some slides for this. Your standard portable external hard drive from Western Digital or Seagate, the one you go down to Costco and pick up and buy, Usually they're USB powered, which is awesome. They don't require wall power. It's a huge advantage for sure. They're portable, which obviously that kind of goes with the USB powered function of everything. Um, they're also 5,400 RPM, which is revolutions per minute or rotations per minute, whatever you want to say. That basically means that the little disks that are in your hard drive are spinning around 5,400 times per minute. And the thing is that only equates to 60 to 100 megabytes per second. Quick little disclaimer, I'm gonna talk about megabytes and megabits today and gigabytes and gigabits per second. A bit, very important, is one eighth of a byte. A byte is eight bits. So as an example, if we are spinning, if we are transferring at 100 megabytes per second, that is 800 megabits per second because a bit is basically one eighth of a byte. So you have to divide bits by eight to get megabytes or gigabytes. Um, real important, internet service providers do this to you all the time. They're like, you get 100 megabits per second. Well, people don't think in bits, people think in bytes. So really you have to divide the internet service provider speed by eight to get what you're actually getting. Total aside, we're gonna keep going. So I made it simple for us. The time to copy 32 gigabytes of images or video gigabytes here is what I'm using is about six minutes. Okay, let's remember that, so six minutes. This is the lowest and the slowest of the bunch. All right, external hard disk drive, not portable. So this is one of those desk units that you gotta plug into the wall. Um, they're wall powered, not very portable. They're 7,200 RPM, so you're gonna get some speed bonuses there, and they copy at 90 to 170 megabytes per second. So previously we were at about 100 at the high end, now we're at 170 at the high end, which means 32 gigabytes of footage or photos we're at three and a half minutes. We've basically almost doubled our speed from the portable drive. But what's the problem? You gotta plug it into the wall. That doesn't necessarily scream like convenience, okay? So <clears throat> obviously this copy time, 
very important, assumes that there's no other bottlenecks in the system. And an example of a bottleneck in the system would be Lightroom. Lightroom itself is not a super fast program. And so Lightroom is gonna be presenting some bottlenecks in this system as it goes. All right, let's go one faster. External solid state hard drive. These are those little Samsung T5s or Western Digital has a really nice one now. SanDisk has a really nice one now. They're USB powered. They're ultra portable. They're super tiny. If you've seen one before, they're basically half the size of this. This is like a super thin little hard drive. They're about half that size, which is awesome. Durable, they have no RPMs. There's no spinning parts in an SSD, which is super cool. 400 megabytes per second. So automatically, we've gone from a six minute transfer time for 32 gigabytes of footage down to 80 seconds, minute and a half roundabout. So that is pretty awesome. Right there, we've made a huge improvement in that. But our big disadvantage before we get into the next thing is that SSDs are limited in size, meaning their capacity is limited. So uh, you can't get these days a 10 terabyte SSD at least for any small amount of money. So you're limited in capacity, you're also limited in price, which we'll talk a little bit about moving forward. Now, we get into the NAS or the DAS. All right, so NASs or DASs, which are direct attach storage or network attach storage, are obviously behemoths of a thing. They're big black boxes, they sit on your desk, they plug into your computer, but they're awesome. There's obviously a reason they exist. So let's look at that. They're not portable. They can transfer though, at a thousand megabytes per second, which honestly is pretty freaking awesome. Um, time to copy that 32 gigabytes of footage. We're down to 32 seconds. So started at six minutes, 32 seconds. That's a 12x increase in copy time, which is pretty sweet. They also have a lot of other advantages that we'll get into in a little bit. And this is actually gonna be the main part of our second part of this video is talking about the network attached storage or direct attached storage, how to configure it, why it might be the right choice for you. All right, continuing on, on a little bit internal solid state drives. So these are the solid state drives that are inside of our computers. You'll notice if you go on Apple's website and you spec out like a, a top spec MacBook Pro with four terabytes of internal storage, it's expensive to get that internal storage. Let's look at why. They're internal, so obviously they're ultra portable because they're always there. They're durable, 3000 megabytes per second, three gigabytes per second. Remember our first drive, this little one, the one that everyone goes to the store and buys? a hundred megabytes per second. So we are what, 30 times, yeah, 30 times faster than where we were with your traditional spinning drive, which means our copy time is 15 seconds. So you guys, hopefully this is starting to make some sense of like, hmm, well, if I'm gonna do some video editing, I probably shouldn't video edit off of one of these hard drives. I should probably video edit off of an internal solid state hard drive. Now, not all internals are solid state. Not all internals are that fast. I'm specking kind of a top of the line internal drive that you're going to see in a flagship Mac or a flagship PC. Again, when I'm recording this video in 2020. So it's a good rough guesstimate of how things work. Now let's take a look at capacity because capacity plays into this quite a bit as well. I've got just a nice chart here. If we take a portable solid state hard drive, usually your max capacity is gonna be about four terabytes. They do go up to five, they do go up to six sometimes, but for a good price, you're around four terabytes with your standard portable hard drive. Uh, price per terabyte is about 28 bucks. Again, this is all recorded in 2020, so take that with a little bit of an understanding here. Prices will vary and fluctuate as time goes on. Desktop external hard drive, usually around 10 terabytes is our max. We're at about a price per terabyte of 25 bucks. Those are the big plug-in drives. They're faster, they're not as portable, they're also cheaper per terabyte. External SSD, usually two terabytes is about as big as you're gonna get without spending the big bucks. You can get bigger, I will acknowledge that, but it's very pricey. $175 per terabyte. So with great speed and great portability comes a huge cost in price. Internal SSD, two terabytes, we're looking at about $300 per terabyte on average for our prices, very fast not even on the scale of portability because they're always with you. There's no need to bring an additional drive, but the price is up there. NAS or DAS, 168 terabyte maximum capacity at the time of recording. That is just using Synology as an example. Uh, obviously that will change quite a bit as time goes on, 
$40 per terabyte. And if you'll remember, the speed of a NAS or a DAS is just under the internal solid state hard drive. It's the second fastest on this chart, and it's also the third cheapest. So you can start to see, hmm, right? If I'm okay with having a big box on my desk, it might be smart to look at these NASs or DASs, NAS DAS, DAS NAS, uh, in order to proceed with my, with my, uh, my photo storage or my video storage. So, some important things. Let's look at portability real quick. Obviously the best is your internal solid state drive because it's not even a thing. You just always have it. Next best is your external solid state drive. And then obviously going all the way down to the NAS or the DAS as being the least portable, but also the cheapest or one of the cheapest and the fastest. Now let's talk a little bit more about some other things before we conclude this video. The next thing is, what if we need redundancy? Remember the backup deal, remote access, ease of expansion, things like that. And you guys, the answer to that question is that's when we get into the NAS or DAS territory. Network attached storage, direct attached storage, both offer a myriad of extra features on top of just being a big, really big, really, really big, really fast hard drive. Um, and that's something that we'll talk about in a future video is how to configure this stuff as well as uh, how to kind of plan it. Because planning out a storage system um, is a little bit intimidating for people. I think it's, it's one of those things that people are like, oh, I could never do that. That big black box looks scary. You need networking equipment. It's not that bad. It's, it's a very doable thing. But that's why we're making this video a whole series. So I want to conclude this video with this. I think what's important to take away at this point in time is basically looking at your current system and identifying which of the things we just talked about are the most annoying to you. Which of the, those things are the most bug you? Is it the portability? Is it that you're always filling these up? Is it that uh, you don't have enough storage? You want easier expansion? What is it? And <clears throat> identify how that can be fixed. Which of these devices looks like an opportunity for you? One quick example I'll give before we end is uh, for me personally, if I was a video shooter and I was an active shooter who shot a lot of video, I would probably use a big internal SSD for my active video editing, for my current project. Because editing 4K 60 footage off of the internal hard drive is gonna be very easy because that's a very fast hard drive. It's the fastest of the bunch. But I would also probably have a NAS or a DAS at home that I copied everything to once my current project was done. Because the NAS or the DAS offers big storage that's reliable, it's redundant, has remote access, but it's big and I'm not gonna wanna bring it with me. So there's combinations of these that we can use as well. So anyway, I hope this worked for you. Identifying your bottleneck, identifying what bugs you is a very important step in moving forward. In the next video, we're gonna take a look more at NASs and DASs and how they can be set up and used. We're gonna actually set them up in a future video we're gonna look at all the process involved with doing that. So you guys are definitely gonna to wanna to check that out. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. If you guys have a question or a comment down below, let me know. Let me know your current mode of organizing things. If you have a system that works for you, which of these drives you're currently using, let us all know down in the comments. Hit subscribe for more content and special thanks to Canon for sponsoring this video. They provided the cameras that we are shooting them on. So thanks guys, see you in the next one.